Hello, I'm Roger Woods, a minister with the Wald Lake Church of Christ located in the city of Wald Lake in the Metro Detroit area. Thank you for joining me today for this time of devotion, study, and communion. I want to give you a heads up about next week. First, we're going to have a guest speaker. Uh, one of our brothers here at church, Barry Chafin, uh, will be speaking in my absence. And I encourage you to tune in to our live stream at 11 a.m. next Sunday. You can access that by going to our website, waldlakecoc.org, and selecting the live stream. I will not be doing a pre-recorded sermon due to my being away to a family gathering. But uh, Barry will be continuing the Anchors for the Soul series. Uh, he will be exploring the third anchor, God Understands. If you miss it Sunday morning, you can catch it later Sunday or on Monday on our YouTube channel. Today, we will be addressing the second anchor for our soul, God Listens. Uh, to get our hearts and minds focused, uh, let's sing number 595 in Songs of Faith and Praise, uh, the hymn, I Come to the Garden. You know, prayer is our direct line of communication to God, to God our Father. But as we will learn in the lesson today, it's not the only line of communication that we have with him. Let's sing. <clears throat> I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as he tarry there. None other has ever known. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet. The birds hush their singing. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, Though the night around me be falling, But he bids me go through the voice of woe, His voice to me is calling. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Would you bow in prayer with me? Holy God, we come to you at this time. So blessed to call you our Father. So blessed to know that as our loving Father, you listen to us. You consider our requests, even our wants. And you consider them. And that you do not leave us hanging, but that you do give us answers. If we, if we will have ears to hear. Father, we pray today as we uh, spend this time together uh, praising you in song, studying your word, communing with your son at his table. We pray, Lord, that we will truly 
learn how to be in tune with you uh, through your word, through your spirit, and through the your body, the church. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, today our scripture reading is going to come from uh, really three places. Uh, the first two are both in the Psalms, Psalm 77 and Psalm 66. Uh, the third will come from the New Testament from the letter of 1 John, beginning with Psalm 77, verses 1 through 9. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands. I would not be comforted. I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked, Will the Lord reject me forever? Will he never show his favor again? Will his unfailing love vanish forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Psalm 66, 16 through 20. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Brian Lowry was born in the waning days of vinyl records. I wish I could say I was in the waning days, but I was in the heyday. <laughs> uh, but he said he would watch his father as he pulled the records from their sleeves and placed them carefully onto the turntable. Some of the records were so worn that they would hiccup along, or even worse, repeat a section over and over again. Lowry uses that illustration to reflect on prayer. He writes, the sound of a broken record, such are my prayers at times. The yellowed pages of my journals betray my stubborn consistency about this request or concern. I rap on God's door, morning, noon, and night, half wishing I could blow the great house down and get some results. I often repeat it, reflect on the spirited persistence of my prayers. He writes, there is a fine line between bold and bullheaded. <laughs> but my pondering, that in my pondering, he writes, I think back on the great text on prayer and the great prayers themselves. Alongside honesty and deep worship, you, you will most often find the quality of persistence. It seems, he concludes, the hiccuped, repetitious sounds from another room are music to God's ear. He listens along with us. At times, he even sets the needle right. In the first letter of John, chapter 5, verse 13 through 15, we read, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. Today I'd like to focus on God as our Heavenly Father who perfectly listens to his children. Jesus uses this as an image, uh, this image of God in his teaching on giving in Matthew the 7th chapter, verses 9 through 11. There he compares God's gifts to the gifts of human fathers. 
He says, no human father would give his children a stone when they ask for bread. So if earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to their children, Jesus reasons, then how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Now, this implies that he, number one, listens to us, and number two, knows us well enough to know what it is that we really need and that it is according to his will. Now, this is easier realized in our life, uh, or I should say easier said than realized in our life. Easier said than done. I think that's the saying I'm going for. It's easier said than done. It's easier to say those words than to really understand them and incorporate them into our life. I know one of the biggest faith struggles I face is understanding that God is listening to my prayers and knows my needs. Like the author of that anonymous poem written on the basement of a wall in Cologne, Germany during World War II that I mentioned last week, I grapple with knowing if God is there. And if he is, does he hear my prayers? When will God answer me? And as Lowry put it, set the needle straight. Set the needle straight. This is why it is so important for me to gather together with the community of believers, the church, rehearsing, as we did last week, the great truths of our faith, sharpening each other as our various gifts are brought to bear upon one another. And one of those great truths, one of those anchors for the soul, is that God listens. You know, good communication involves a flow of information going both ways. Uh, this is illustrated by the practice of assertiveness and active listening. And remember, each person is responsible for both. It's a two-way communication. When that doesn't happen, it's called a one-sided conversation. And I think we would all agree that they are less than satisfying. That is true in our earthly relationships and with our Father in heaven. Let's break this down. Assertiveness means that we are able to appropriately express what we want. You know, I know people who are terribly good at being assertive and in the process run over everybody. <laughs> but I also know folks who, due to their inability or willingness to be assertive, get run over. We need to learn to appropriately express our wishes if we hope to have them considered by others and by God. By appropriate, I mean that we express ourselves in a way that communicates our feelings while being sensitive to the feelings and opinions of others. Now, you might be thinking, Roger, the comparison is not fair. God knows what we need before we ever ask. And that is true. He is omniscient. He knows everything. And he knows us like a potter knows the pot she cast. But folks, that's just the point. He knows that if we do not ask first, we will miss that he is the one answering our prayer. We might write it off as chance or our abilities rather than God's provision. And by letting us come to him with our requests, hurts, joys, and sorrows, he is communicating his love for us. Active listening now. There's the other side of that two-way communication. Active listening means we listen to the requests of others in order to understand. When someone has made up their mind that theirs is the only way to view the topic, my way or the highway, well then effective communication ceases to exist. And by the way, active listening is not listening for ammunition like debaters do to refute the other person's point. In active listening, we are listening to understand the other's point of view, even if we don't agree with it. Indeed, the active part means that we probe respectfully with questions so that we can get exactly what they are saying and that they know that we have listened. Now, this communicates the value that we place in them as a person. God actively listens. 
He wants to hear from us. Just as God fluently speaks the five love languages that we talked about last week, God is a master at communication. The difficulty we have in effective communication with God, well, that's ours. We don't know how to appropriately be assertive. James notes that you do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. How we ask is important. Equally important is that we listen to God's reply. Failing to actively listen when God speaks is often why we think God is silent. And sometimes we don't reply, we don't ask, because we're, we don't understand God. We think we can't bring our concerns to him. They're too small or they're too harsh. God can take it. He's a big guy, <laughs> the biggest. He is able to hear us, even at our worst. He wants to hear us, and he wants us to listen to him. So let's briefly explore how God completes this communication circuit with us. I think we can tr describe this as a three-legged stool. God communicates with us through scripture, through the church, his body, and through his spirit. If we are neglectful in any of these, we can miss not only God's general will, that is what is his will for all people, but also his specific will, what he is trying to do for us in our personal circumstances. First, let's explore scripture. In Hebrews 1, 1 through 3, we learn about God, how God communicated in the past. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he also made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he provided purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. In this passage, we see God's communication through Scripture. Where do we learn about the prophets? Where do we learn about the Son of God? Scripture. It is that constant source of historic revelation from God passed down through the church that has held together believers over the changing times, languages, and cultures. Those may change, but the Word of God remains constant. When we want to know God's will, we need only open the pages and open our hearts and minds. There will we, we will be reminded that God is listening and provided in advance for us the answers to many of our questions. God through Jeremiah lets captive Israel know that if they will call on me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God is not playing hide and seek. He is seeking us and ready and eager to be found. Our open-hearted search for him will not go unrewarded. In the New Testament, Paul in Philippians 4, 6, again reminds us that God wants to hear from us. There he writes, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Presenting our requests, calling on him in prayer, is our being assertive. God invites this. But God is not stuck in history. Our God is the living God. And he speaks to us today through that second stool, or leg of the stool, by means of his spirit. Jesus in John 16 tells his apostles, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. Then continuing in verse 13, but when he speaks the spirit of truth, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. 
He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. God has not left us a book only. He has poured out his Spirit within us by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are the temple of God's Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. And together we are being formed into a temple of living stones, 1 Peter 2, verse 5. God is present in each Christian so that by it, so that it is by means of the Spirit that we can communicate those emotions that we just can't get the words out to express. Romans 8, 26. Now a word of caution, especially with some of the teaching about the Holy Spirit today. The Spirit cannot say something that is against the revealed word of God. These three stools, uh, three legs of the stool, work together. And without all three of them, the stool cannot stand. The communication circuit cannot be completed. John, when dealing with the heresy of Christians denying Jesus' incarnation, says this in 1 John 1, 4, excuse me, verse 2 and 3. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. It cannot be from God or of God if it does not agree with Scripture. Many today will claim God spoke to them. John would say, test the Spirit. And God in his providence has given us a written record as a reference. But there is another way that God speaks to us today. He speaks to us through the church. Paul teaches us that the church is the body of Christ. God distributes his gifts within the body so that we can build one another up and do the work of the kingdom. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 26 through 27. We see this when our prayers are often answered by the body of Christ. You know, we pray for comfort when we lose a loved one. Uh, we pray for comfort and support when illness or injury occur. And how does God answer that prayer? He answers it as the body of Christ, the church, rushes in to serve those needs. Don't miss that as a reply of God to our prayer for help. God does listen. And often through you and I, well, he sets the needle right. You know, I see this in the government of our church. I serve as one of four elders. Brian, David, and Keith and myself don't always see everything eye to eye. But I trust that God is speaking through them and that together, along with your prayers, your input, we can discern his will and the way for his church. Indeed, often it is your input that God uses to guide us. So please, please don't hold back your concerns and your uh, ideas. They are perhaps God's way of speaking to us. And if you withhold those, you just might be withholding God's answer to our prayers. God, he is the consummate communicator. He appropriately expresses his will, and he actively listens to our wants and our needs. The question is, are we willing to become better communicators with him? Are we appropriately approaching the mercy seat? Are we listening actively 
for his reply? Are we meditating upon his historic revelation, scripture? Are we keeping in step with his spirit? Are we valuing the way he works through his body, the church? Believing that God listens gives us another anchor to deploy in our journey through life. In both our joys and our sorrows, knowing that God listens and speaks to us gives us confidence to live for him in any circumstance. May the Lord find us listening intently when he calls us, either to service for him in this life or to account in the judgment. But listen, church, if we listen to him now, we will hear him say in judgment, well done, good and faithful servant. Let's sing a song, number 988 in Songs of Faith and Praise, When the Savior Calls. <clears throat> when the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls my name, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere, listening, I'll be somewhere, listening, I'll be somewhere, listening for my name. I'll be somewhere, listening, I'll be somewhere, listening, I'll be somewhere, listening for my name. If my robe is right, when he calls me, if my robe is right, I will hear. If my robe is right, when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere, listening, I'll be somewhere, listening, I'll be somewhere, listening for my name. If my heart is right when he calls me, if my heart is right, I will hear. If my heart is right, when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I want you to also remember, if you are struggling with your faith, don't, don't go it alone. God has provided for us help if we will only take advantage of it. He does hear our prayers. And I want to encourage you to go to him in prayer, but also go to Go to a trusted brother and sister in Christ. Uh, listen to them, because God may be speaking to you in his many and mysterious ways, if you'll only have ears to hear. Now, if you wish to learn how to become a child of God, how to add, uh, how to have him become an anchor for your soul, I'm happy to study with you. I'm happy to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ with you. I'm happy to share with you how he has changed my life and helped me live a, not just a better, to be a better me, but to be the me that God has created me to be. And God has done that through his son, Jesus Christ. And now as we come to the Lord's table, we celebrate that act of love which has helped us become no longer who we are, but who he is. We are now, through 
to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, children of God. You know, I, I, I'm reminded of the passage we've already read today from Hebrews 1, 1 through 3, of how God spoke to us through the prophets. But then there in verse 2, he makes this statement. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. And then he notes who, who the Son is. Well, he's the heir of all things. He's the one through whom the universe was made. Not only this, he is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. It is in Christ that all things, all things, spiritual and physical, are maintained, sustained by his powerful word. And he is the one who has provided purification for our sins. And now he sits down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And he sits down with us even now at this table. As he says, take, take this bread, which represents my body. And remember me as you do it. Remember the love that I came to earth that brought me to earth so that you could be made whole and blameless before God so that your sins can be forgiven. Not just for a year, not just for a while, but for eternity. We have such a blessing in Christ. Let's not forget it. And as we partake of this bread, let us remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which bow with me. We thank you, Father, for this bread and that it represents the body of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we are thankful that uh, we are still connected to this body, that Jesus is still our head, for he is living. He was raised on the third day, and he ascended into heaven and is seated at your right hand. Lord God, we thank you that we can partake of this bread representing that body and be reminded of your love, of his sacrifice, and of our joy at being, being forgiven for our sin. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us partake of the bread. And now let us bow in prayer for the cup. Holy God, we thank you for this cup representing the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross that cleanses us of our sin, that establishes a new covenant, uh, a new covenant that uh, enables us to be a temple, a temple for your spirit, uh, that enables us to be able to be connected directly to the mind of God. Christ through that spirit, that through that spirit you hear our groans and utterances, the words that we cannot say, that we know you listen, and we know that you do respond and did respond powerfully through your son Jesus Christ upon the cross. Father, help us to remember that sacrifice, but to also to remember that he is our living Lord, that death could not contain and that his sacrifice is a living sacrifice, one that we continue to benefit from even to this day, and one that we are called to emulate in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I do encourage you excuse me, to join us uh, next week on the live stream. I uh, will miss being with you next week, but... I know that Barry Chafin will uh, bless you greatly as he explores that next anchor, God understands. Have a blessed day.